Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. With a long history of technological advancement, UAVs have revolutionized immensely. In the early 20th century, remote piloted aircraft and guided missiles were considered the same things. Several countries searched for ways to take out enemy ships and land-based targets. Back in the day, rockets weren't strong enough to destroy such targets. In World War II, the U.S. put radio-controlled equipment on their retired bomber aircraft, packed them up with explosives, and crashed them against hardened targets in France and Holland. Later, the Soviets began to develop surface-to-air missiles. The U.S. knew that it was no longer safe for the aircraft to fly over communist-held territories with pilots on them. Soon, RPVs were being used for other purposes, including surveillance, which led to the development of modern UAVs. Nations across the world started to develop target drones. Modern UAVs have become a hot debate worldwide. It was recognized as an important weapon system in the early 1980s when the Israeli Defense Forces developed small drones resembling large model airplanes with infrared cameras television, and target designators for laser-guided munitions. These drones were remote, fully autonomous, and could effectively communicate with a control station in the vicinity. A target drone is a remote-controlled unmanned aerial vehicle used in the training of anti-aircraft crews and to test new weapon systems. Some target drones use countermeasures, radar, and similar systems to mimic manned aircraft. In the past, the United Kingdom has modified jet and propeller-powered aircraft such as the Fairy Firefly and Gloucester Meteor into remote-controlled drones. But such modifications were very costly. So a reliable solution for the U.S. was to convert retired or older versions of the aircraft such as the F-4 Phantom II and F-16 Fighting Falcon into remotely piloted drones as full-scale aerial targets. The QF-4 was basically a full-size unmanned target drone version of the successful Cold War era F-4 Phantom II aircraft. The QF-4 drone was put into operational service in 1997. It was either controlled by a pilot at a ground control station or by a computer via the Gulf Range drone system. It can also be integrated with electronic and infrared countermeasures for validating the aircraft and weapons fired against it. The QF-4 had a top speed of Mach 2, along with a range of 1,300 miles, and it could acquire a height of up to 60,000 feet. Even though the QF-4s proved to be very efficient during the target training, these drones are not operational anymore. Indeed, many experts consider the Phantom to be the last excellent dogfighting plane. On December 21st, 2016, Four QF-4 Phantom IIs flew out for the last flight of the F-4 Phantom II in the U.S.
With the sundown on the QF-4, the U.S. transitioned towards their plans to continue target training with the QF-16 drones. This would provide pilots and new weapon systems with a more up-to-date and realistic adversary. The U.S. started converting F-16 Falcon aircraft into QF-16 target drones. The conversion requires structural changes and several significant modifications of the airframe. The F-16 goes through an 8-cell, 5-month process, with the earliest stages focusing on component removal and installation of drone peculiar equipment. Boeing suggested that the QF-16 could help train pilots, providing them with a target that could maneuver better and fly at supersonic speed. Before takeoff, a pilot constantly engages with the remote control facility while carrying out different tests on the aircraft to check whether everything is working. If the pilot is satisfied with all the pre-flight checks, he climbs out of the cockpit and locks the canopy from the outside. Later, the control is turned over to the pilot sitting in the control room. The first QF-16 jet was tested in 2013. The mission profile covered several flight characteristics, including auto takeoff and landing, and simulated maneuvers, including a barrel roll and a split S. A move in which the drone turns upside down right before making a half loop so that it flies the right way up in the opposite direction. Moreover, the first QF-16 attained an acceleration of 7G but was capable of maneuvering at 9G. It executed countermeasures and electronic attack missions using KPP-required mission pods and demonstrated the vector scoring system and the flight termination system. Not only did the U.S. convert retired aircraft into unmanned aerial vehicles, but they also converted the first-ever turbine-powered UH-1 Huey into a remote-controlled helicopter. UH-1 became operational in 1958. And since then, the U.S. has developed 16,000 of these multi-mission helicopters. The UH-1 was used for air assault, cargo transportation, aeromedical evacuation, and sometimes for search and rescue missions. The UH-1 had a significant payload capacity and could carry a variety of weapons, including rockets, grenade launchers, and machine guns. Some of these helicopters were also deployed by the U.S. in Vietnam, where they conducted reconnaissance operations. Using autonomous capabilities, the U.S. began converting UH-1 Huey into unmanned remote control choppers for safe, reliable, and rapid cargo delivery. They used the Autonomous Aerial Cargo Utility System which allows any rotary wing aircraft to fly autonomously, even in severe environments and weather. In general, AACUS is a package of sensors and software that can be integrated with rotary wing aircraft. AACUS was a breakthrough as it revolutionized the entire cargo supply operation. With this technology, 
Critical warfighting cargo could easily be supplied to forward deployed troops without placing human pilots at risk in high threat environments. In December 2017, a fully autonomous UH-1 conducted a point-to-point -point cargo resupply mission at the Urban Training Center at Marine Corps Base Quantico, Virginia. During the flight, the UH-1 helicopter visually tracked some targets and broadcasted the recorded information back to the control station. The performance of this system was demonstrated with flight test cases of stationary and randomly moving targets in unstructured environments. An intuitive handheld tablet is used in the field to call up the required supplies quickly and easily. This capability was displayed during the demonstration when a Marine requested an autonomous resupply. After years of research and development, the U.S. introduced one of the most important tactical UAVs, one that is representative of trends in developing these aircraft. This MQ-1 Predator took its first flight in 1994. The shape and size of the UAVs depend on the purpose of their development. Larger UAVs are used for reconnaissance. The RQ-4 is undoubtedly the most important UAV in this category. In 1995, it began as an advanced concept technology demonstration and was determined to provide high altitude, long endurance ISR capability to other fighter aircraft. The RQ-4 features a unique shape, especially the nose cone, which is bulged due to the sensor equipment within and is well contoured to the fuselage, promoting a streamlined shape. The tail section is capped by two vertical tail fins and a couple of under fuselage ventral strakes. Since the deployment of the RQ-4 in 2001, the pilots and payload sensor operators used to gather intel via a legacy ground system. This was not ideal for them as the technology was based on early 2000s computing capabilities. However, everything changed under the ground segment modernization program. One of the main benefits of this program was to provide a more modern system to the operators. Each new RQ-4 ground segment included 10 Global Hawk cockpits. As legacy ground segments featured only a single cockpit, they could control only one aircraft at a time. So the most remarkable feature of this man-machine interface was that any pilot could now control any Global Hawk from any cockpit. As soon as RQ-4 lands, the maintenance teams arrive at the location and tow it back to the base for maintenance. Airmen perform various maintenance procedures both inside and outside the aircraft. They put covers on the forward nacelle air intake to ensure no debris or dust would damage the internal parts. The airmen carefully utilize the push pins to secure the braces as they are very expensive. Advancement in technology and unmanned aerial systems is raising concerns for the future of manned combat aviation. 
UAVs that are equal or superior to manned combat aircraft might replace them as frontline combat platforms. However, there's no telling where unmanned aircraft technology will go in the future. We're almost guaranteed to see more of these remote planes and helicopters utilized by air forces worldwide. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.